Greetings everyone, and welcome once more to another video about Warhammer 40k lore. In today's episode of General Facts About Space Marines, we are going to talk a bit about the roles a Space Marine plays inside the chapter, mainly the paths of Scout, Devastator, Assault, Tactical, and Veteran Astartes. So, without any more muss and fuss, let's see how one can get from a lowly initiate to a respected and admired member of the Veteran Company. According to the Codex Astartes, Space Marines are usually organized into three main types of squad, Tactical, Assault, and Devastator. Each of these squads has a unique battlefield role and is designed to operate together to provide mutual support and maximum flexibility. In addition to these three squad types, the first, also called the Veteran Company, can be formed into Terminator or Veteran squads, while the scouts of the 10th Company are always fielded as scout squads. All Space Marine squad types, apart from the scouts, normally consist of 10 Astartes, but they can be further divided into two separate combat squads in battle, sometimes called demi-squads. This gives each unit a further degree of flexibility in action. An aspirant who becomes a neophyte and is accepted into the chapter's ranks will serve in many roles, starting out as a young scout marine in the 10th company, and if he is lucky, progressing through the ranks as an initiate followed by full battle brother of the chapter, serving as Devastator Marine, Assault Marine, Tactical Marine, and if he is extremely lucky and competent, eventually earning the honor of serving as a veteran in the Elite First Company. A favored few excel even past this great honor and join the ranks of the chapter's officers, thus earning the right to lead their fellows in battle. The first step along the path to becoming a mighty hero of the chapter is service in one of the scout squads of the 10th Company. Scout squads consist of a veteran Space Marine sergeant and four to nine scout marines. The role of the sergeant is to train the scouts and lead them in battle. Only sergeants of considerable experience and status are designed for this role. Scouts follow every word their sergeant utters, for it is said that he has forgotten more lessons of war than many more senior officers will ever learn. While serving as a scout, a neophyte learns the most subtle arts of combat. In a range of infiltration and reconnaissance missions, he learns how to approach and observe the enemy. Information gathered in such missions is then passed back to the main battle force. The scouts get their first taste of combat by way of carefully placed ambushes, the scout sergeant drawing on centuries of experience to deploy his charges in such a manner as to teach them as valuable a lesson as the enemy. Unlike that enemy, the scouts learn valuable skills in such combat. The enemy earns nothing more than a quick death, for even a neophyte space marine is a potent warrior compared to a normal man. A space marine serving in a Devastator squad may have only recently have completed his service in the 10th company and been accepted as a full initiate and battle brother of the chapter. This will be his first experience in fighting in power armor. When first assigned to such a squad, the space marine will bear a bolter and grenades and fulfill a support role within the squad, providing close support to those battle brothers armed with heavy weapons identifying targets, and being close at hand to proffer ammunition and to take up the weapon of any who should fall. Only when he has proven himself steady and reliable in battle will the Space Marine be entrusted with one of the chapter's heavy weapons, which he will then come to master over the course of a few hundred battles. Devastator squads consist of a sergeant and nine Space Marines. Up to four Space Marines can be armed with heavy weapons, while the remainder will carry bolters and spare ammunition. This is the most heavily armed type of Space Marine squad, and they are deployed wherever overwhelming power is required, especially when the chapter faces enemy armor or fortified positions. 
Having proven himself steadfast and disciplined in the Devastator squad, a Space Marine will, in time, earn himself a place in his company's assault squads. Here, the Space Marine comes to master the application of sudden and overwhelming force, taking the fight directly to the enemy's strong points. He embraces the controlled savagery of close combat and looks his enemy in the eye as he deals him death. Assault squads are specialists at fighting in hand-to-hand combat. Each squad consists of a sergeant and nine space marines, all equipped with jump packs and armed with a close combat weapon in each hand. Common armament consists of a bolt pistol and a chainsword. Optionally, two of the space marines may carry plasma pistols. This combination is ideal for fast-attacking, close-quarter fighting assault troops. Even though tactical squads are the most common type of squad in any chapter, to earn a place in one, a space marine must have proven himself both courageous and wise in battle. Throughout his service in the Devastator and Assault squads, he will be proven adaptable in his approach to the arts of war and will have mastered a range of tactics and weaponry. Tactical squads are the most commonly fielded squad types in a chapter. A tactical squad is led by a sergeant and includes nine other space marines. Of these, seven battle brothers are armed with bolters, while the remaining two can be armed with bolters, or alternatively, one may carry a heavy weapon such as a missile launcher or a heavy boulder, or a specialist weapon like a flamer or a meltagun. This combination is the most tactically flexible and offers a good mixture of capabilities within the squad. After serving in hundreds of campaigns and thousands of battles, and having conquered the very worst the galaxy has to throw at him, a space marine, if he is still alive, is likely to be considered a veteran. In most chapters, the honor of veterancy is not measured by length of service, but in blood spilled, horrors overcome, and mighty deeds done. As a prelude to service in the Elite First Company, many Space Marine veterans fulfill the role of sergeant, leading squads of all kinds in any of the other companies. Thus, many of the Space Marines of the Veteran Company will be battle-proven leaders as well as experienced warriors. The members of the Veteran Company are fielded in one of three squad types, Terminator squads wear the uniquely powerful Terminator armor, sometimes called tactical dreadnought armor. This armored suit is massive in construction, virtually turning a space marine into a one-man tank. Every chapter has a limited number of Terminator suits, and each is an ancient artifact crafted thousands of years ago. Terminators are considerably less mobile than other space marines, and are primarily used in starship boarding actions or in extremely close quarters when heavy fire support cannot be easily brought to bear. So resilient is the armor that it's supposedly able to operate inside plasma reactors, within volcanoes, and inside highly irradiated areas of deep space. To wear an ancient suit of Terminator armor is one of the greatest honors to which a space marine can aspire. Each suit bears on its left shoulder the Crux Terminatus, the unique honor badge of the Terminator. Each Crux is said to contain at its core a tiny fragment of the armor worn by the Emperor himself when he fought his final battle against the traitor Warmaster Horus, providing a direct link between the Space Marine and the Father of Mankind. Despite its obvious benefits, Terminator armor is not suitable for all missions. Most of the time, veterans take to the field wearing ordinary power armor, albeit a suit inscribed with many hundreds of battle honors, as well as the Crux Terminatus. When wearing power armor, veterans are formed into Vanguard Veteran Squads, or Stern Guard Veteran Squads. By virtue of their rank, veterans have access to the best weapons in the chapter's armory, including Sacred Blades, and artificer-crafted combi weapons. Vanguard veteran squads go to battle equipped with the most lethal of close combat weapons, 
and often wear jump packs to bring them to bear before the enemy can react. Stern Guard veteran squads carry a wide array of ranged weaponry and specialized ammunition, and are masters in its overwhelming application. Veteran squads are rarely deployed en masse, but are instead used to bolster the line, provide an unstoppable spear tip, or to act as a highly flexible and mobile reserve. Each of the chapter's ten companies is led by a captain. These leaders are second in experience only to the chapter master himself, and each is a warrior so deadly that he will rarely meet his match. Each captain is an inspirational and determined leader, able to coordinate the space marines under his command, no matter what they're facing. In addition to leading space marines in battle, each captain holds titles dependent on his other responsibilities with regard to the workings of the chapter on its home world, such as Master of the Fleet, Master of Scouts, or Master of the Marches. Of the thousand awesome and terrifying warriors that comprise a space marine chapter, there is but one chapter master. A leader with centuries of experience in the very crucible of battle. His own fighting skills will be unsurpassed by any in the chapter, whether in the use of gun, blade, or bare hands. His very rank speaks of a past littered with the bodies of the enemy, beaten foes of the most terrifying and inhuman sort. It is not enough, however, for the chapter master to be an amazing warrior. He must also be a superb tactician, grounded in the teachings of the Codex Astartes, and honed through countless decisions made in the maelstrom of close action. His warriors are also his brothers, and he knows that they will give their lives at his command. He must preserve his troops, but must also accomplish his mission and uphold the honor of the chapter. He will be steeped in the lore of the chapter, and be sworn to keep its secrets, and must conduct his diplomacy accordingly, for space marines maintain a web of time-proven oaths and honor debts, and do not simply heed the commands of an imperial functionary, no matter how impressive his title. Those who wish a chapter master to send his warriors into battle must give him a damn good reason to do so. In addition to this, a chapter master will sometimes be the ruler of his chapter homeworld, a resource that is too valuable for him to ignore. Among the greatest risks facing a chapter master is the very power he wields, for a chapter of space marines is a force capable of devastating entire worlds at his order. It is an Astartes' very power that can lead to hubris. And it is hubris that can so easily condemn even a space marine's soul to damnation, as those dedicated to the protection of mankind may very easily come to believe that they should rule it instead. A space marine has three main levels of interaction that shape who he is. The overall chapter views and beliefs the battle doctrine and mindset of his battle company, and the individual bonds he forges with his squadmates, with whom he fights side by side. The first bond that all space marines share is the bond that makes them part of their unique chapter. This is coded into their flesh through the gene seed they all share, dating back to their primarch. Even chapters of subsequent foundings share this trait, no matter how far they are removed from the lineage of their progenitor. The beliefs and combat doctrine of the chapter, for most, is rooted in the Codex Astartes. It is at the chapter level that the command structure, battle doctrine, and many ingrained beliefs are created for the Space Marine. A member of the Space Wolves, for example, knows that it is his duty to take the battle to the foes of the Emperor directly, bringing death with sword and bolter in close quarters. The same cannot be said of an Iron Hand, for example, who favors dealing death from afar with mastercrafted weaponry and war machines. The belief structure created by the chapter becomes everything to the battle brother. Many initiates come from feral or feudal worlds who know nothing of the Imperium or the greater galaxy so it is through their indoctrination into the chapter that everything they know of the galaxy is taught. 
if the librarians and chaplains of the chapter teach these young men that they must entreat the machine spirits to make their bolters fire and their starships traverse the void of space, many do not think any differently, and this will become simple fact to the aspirant. Another chapter will teach its brethren the intricate ways of maintaining their weaponry and how the Imperium actually works and functions. These wildly different views on the basic structures of the universe around them can lead to very interesting interactions when two members of different chapters meet. The second bond of brotherhood is the company. Once an aspirant has become a space marine, he is placed into a company. At a company level, a space marine learns the deeper structure of how he will fight the enemies of mankind. The Codex Astartes outlines the progression of each battle brother through the companies of their chapter, and what skills he will gain during his tenure in each. According to the Codex Astartes, a battle brother progresses from a scout marine of the 10th company to a devastator of the 9th company, then on to an assault marine of the 8th company. Once a space marine has mastered the many ways in which he is capable of making war, only then he is ready to enter the tactical squads of his chapter's battle and reserve companies. Space marine companies often have many ancient traditions and rites based on their past battles and achievements. These become very important to the battle brother and will greatly influence him. For example, a member of a specific chapter, who lost many of his brothers in a prolonged campaign against enemy Xenos, may observe an annual rite commemorating the sacrifices made to bring about that victory. Missing this observance, if not in an active battle situation, could bring about a sense of melancholy and shame to the battle brother, who feels he is not properly honoring his fallen comrades. And the third bond is the squad. The most intimate bonds are among the battle brothers of the Space Marine squad. Day in and day out, these hardened warriors fight alongside each other for the glory of the Emperor and the Imperium. With each battle, the members of the squad become more ingrained in the ways of battle and how to rely on each other in any circumstance. It is within a squad, and that can be tactical, assault, devastator or scout squad, that the Astartes has spent most of his time. If he leaves his squad for another, to begin his tenure with the Death Watch, for example, or for some other reason, he must leave a part of himself behind, and learn how to function on a whole new level as part of a new team. And this is what I had to say today about the path of a space marine within his chapter. What type of squad would you like to be part of if you were a space marine? Let me know in the comments below, along, of course, with any other thoughts and opinions you might have. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, and if you'd like to see more lore on space marines or other 40k topics, please subscribe to my channel. I thank you very much for watching, and wish you a pleasant day. And always remember... The Emperor protects.